page 111 in your textbooks. You did the review numbers 1 through 6. You also did back on page 104 to 105, numbers 1 through 4 and 21 to 26. But we're going to start on page 111, reviewing from before the weekend. We were talking about a group of numbers that are not real numbers, meaning real in the sense of the definition of real numbers, and those numbers class are imaginary, imaginary numbers. It's said basically imaginary numbers are square roots of negatives. negatives, and the most basic negative of all would be negative one. one. So we said that the square root of <clears throat> negative one is our most basic imaginary number, and we'll just represent it i. And so i is used to represent the square root of negative 1. So any square root of any other negative, for instance, the square root of negative 8, for instance, could be factored into a square root of negative 1 times the square root of 8, where the square root of negative 1 just becomes uh -huh. i. So practically speaking, we don't waste our time doing this. I said the key to working with square roots of negatives, the key to working with imaginary numbers, Genesis, was to... <laughs> Pull out your i. Very good. We just write it as i times the square root of 8, where the negative becomes an i uh, in front of the radical. And of course, you do whatever you would normally do. Like with the square root of 8 class, we'd reduce that factoring into 4 and 2. So we take the square root of 4 to get 2i times the square root of 2. And that's what we've been looking at. But it said that i has various powers. Obviously, you can have i to really any power you want. But four fundamental powers of i. We said that i to the first power is represented, Brandon? I. We said that I squared becomes um, negative, I. No. Mm. One, negative one. Negative one. Okay, she saved herself. Negative one. This is one of the most important ones because it comes up so often. I cubed is lesser used, but that's equal, Maddie, to negative, negative I. And I to the fourth is used whenever we simplify larger powers of I because I to the fourth is simply one. one. And so anything bigger than that, I said, let's just pull out four eyes every time. And we'll pull out as many four eyes as you can. And whatever you're left with will be one of these fundamental powers. That's what we were doing on page 111. So Genesis number one on page 111, I to the fifth. Well, if you pull out four eyes, it leaves you with... Oh. Number one, it's an I to the fifth. So if you pull out four eyes, it becomes I to the first, which is just... I. Uh, number two, that's a memorized power of I, Kendall. Negative one. Negative one. Number three, I to the 15th. What's the biggest four that you can pull out of 15? 12. 12. And if you pull it out, it leaves you with how many I's? Three. Three, and I cubed is? Negative I. And there's our answer, negative I. Number four, uh, I to the 20th. What's the biggest four in 20? 20. 20. It is a four. And if it is a fourth power, then it just equals one. Number five, if you pull out your biggest four, what would that be, Abby? Uh, 13. Well, there's 13 oh. sets of i to the fourths, uh, 13 four i's that we can pull out. And if you pull out all 13 four i's, how many i's are left? Um, two. Two. And so that's i squared, so it's just? Negative one. Negative one. In other words, pull out 52 i's. And if you pull out 52 i's, which is a fourth power of i, leaves you with negative one. And then i to the 69th, Maddie. What's the biggest four in 69? There's more than 16. There's 17 sets of four, which would be I to the 68th. So if you pull out 68 I's, 17 sets of four, it leaves you with I to the first, which is just I. All right, now we got all six of those correct. Questions on any of those? You need to see them worked on the board. Obviously, you did them all verbally. Do any of them we need to see worked? All right, flip back to page 104. Page 104. And again, normally your powers of I, you won't actually see the I written for a lot of your imaginary numbers. You'll produce the I. So, for instance, on number one, the square root of negative 64, Audrey, becomes? 8I. 8I. I times the square root of 64, but since that's just 8, it just becomes 8I. What about the square root of negative 81, Genesis? 9i. What about the square root of negative 50, Kendall? 5i times square root of 2. Good. The i, the negative, you pull out and it becomes an i. The 50 you factor in 25 and 2 to get 5i times the square root of 2. Excellent. And then what about the square root of negative 90, Michael? 3i times the square root of 10. Excellent job. 3i times the square root of 10. How many went 4 for 4 on those? Any questions on simplifying imaginary numbers? 
Let's take a look then at 21 to 26. Now, all of these were multiplication. They didn't really give you a whole lot of practice with addition, subtraction, or division, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll look at some of those in a moment. But uh, number 21, before you multiply, you do not say negative times negative is positive because you don't multiply negatives. As soon as you see a square root of a negative class, you have to pull out your eye. Let's try that again. As soon as you see square root of a negative class, you've got to pull out your eye. So I don't even write square root of negative 6. I write it, Abby. And then I don't even write the square root of negative 4, Brandon. I would write... Or, since that one's so easy, maybe we just go to 2i. It wouldn't be wrong to say i squared of 4, but that would get you to a 2i eventually anyway. And so it's i squared of 6 times 2i, and when you multiply, you get what, Maddie? Three squared of six. And then, Audrey, we remember that i squared means negative 1, so it ends up as... Now, if you happen to do i squared of 6 times i squared of 4, nothing wrong with that. You get i squared squared of 24. The i squared becomes the negative 1. This factors into 4 times 6, where you get a 2 times the square root of 6, and you still end up at negative 2 squared of 6. So a couple ways to do it. How many ended up at that answer for number 21 regardless? All right, let's take a look at number 22. And again, we're not going to write square root of negative 7, square root of negative 14. Genesis, we have? I times square root of 10. Which one we multiply gives us? And uh, do you see a square? It's awfully big, so surely there's a square in there. 49 times to pull out a 7. And the i squared becomes a negative 1, which times the 7 makes this a times the square root of. And there would be our answer for number 22. How many had 22? That answer. Number 23, we have the square root of negative 11 times the square root of negative 22. But the better way to write it down would have been, Kendall? Um, I times square root of 11 times 5 times square And that gives us initially? I squared times the square root of 222. And we should see a perfect square in 242. One of our bigger ones. But it's a number that seems to be in here. Right, 11 kind of makes us think of 121 times 2. two I squared becomes, um, one. but the square root of 121 becomes, 11. so put that together and get one. times the square root of two. 2. And there's our answer for number 23. How many have that answer for 23? Uh, number 24, Monica, what was your final answer? Uh, final answer was negative 5 times the square root of 6. Great job. Negative 5 times the square root of 6. Number 25, Abby. Uh, negative 10 times the square root of 3. Excellent. Negative 10 times the square root of 3. And then number 26, Brandon. Negative 2 times the square root of 7. Hmm, that is not what I got. Let's take a look at that very quickly. We have i square root of 21 times i. And it says square root of 28. That's a really big number. And I could, I mean, we've got the calculator, we could just multiply them, or we could try to reduce this one down before we do. It's up to you. Do you want to just multiply straight up and worry about it from, you don't. Okay. So how can we simplify the 28 before we multiply? So we pull out a 2, so we end up with i times i times 2. And now it's a 21 times the 7 that's still left in the radical to get... 147. All right, now what square is in 147? Anyone help? 39. 49 times. Three. Good, Michael. All right, so we, we pull out another 7 times the 2, and the negative of the i squared rather becomes class. So really it's 7 times 2 times negative 1, or times the square root of the. Three. If you just multiply it straight up, you'd end up with i squared times, what is 21 times 28, anybody? Calculator. 21 times 28. 580. 580? 588. 588, okay. Um, and there again, I try dividing by 2. What's 588 divided by 2? 294. Yeah, that's not a square. Uh, divide by 3. 
ah, there's my square. And that's what I would do with, remember, with the big numbers. Try to divide it by 2, then divide by 3, then divide by 5. You skip 4 because it's already a square. See if 5 would work, 6 and so forth. So that's where I would get the 14 and the negative 1 to get negative 14 times the square root of 3 if you multiplied without simplifying first. Questions on any of the 21 to 26? Yes, ma'am. Number 25. Number 25. Let's take a look at it. Maybe I squared of 15 times I squared of 20, assuming you pulled out your I's first, correct? Yes. All right. And the I times I gave you? And the square root of, well, let's see, 15 times 20 becomes? Ah, now that, that square should be kind of screaming at you. 300. What square is in 300? 25. We'll something better than that. 300 and 100. There we go. Because we can take the square root of 100 really easily. Ooh, careful. What times itself gives 100? 10. 10 times 10. There we go. It's Monday. I'm right, shaking the rest off. So there's our negative 10 times the square root of 3. You could do 25. Because normally double zeros, you know, we would use the 25. But this would 25 times 12. So negative 5, uh, of course, that, that's there. So did you have this negative 5 squared of 12? So we just need to go one step further, do the 4 times 3, and there's the 2 for the negative 10. All right, good. Any other questions? Good question. But any other questions on 21 to 26? Anyone perfect? You got 6 for 6 on those? Okay, Michael, great job. Oh, Maddie as well as can't. If you would eat donuts, you'd have energy to raise your hand all the way. But you know. Anyway, um, questions on 21 to 26? All right, let's do some quick review and then we will get into our new material for today. Again, imaginary numbers are easy as long as you remember to pull out your eye. <clears throat> Meaning the negative that's in the radical goes away and it becomes an I in front of the radical. But that sounds really long and hard. It sounds more fun to say pull out your eye. All right, so at your seats, I need you to simplify. The square root of negative 81 plus the square root of negative 18, minus 2 times the square root of negative 9, plus 3 times the square root of negative 98, plus the square root of 25. I'll eventually have two more for you. seconds longer to be finishing up.
All right. I'm just going to take a look at these very quickly. Um, square root of negative 81, how would I simplify that, Brandon? 9i. Just 9i. What about the square root of negative 18, Abby? Um, 3i times the square root of 2. Good. We know this is going to factor to 9 times 2, and we're going to have to pull out the i. So we end up with a 3i times the square root of 2. Um, just this part of the next term, Audrey, becomes... But that gets multiplied, of course, by this negative 2. Negative 6i. Then for the next term here, Maddie. Good. Initially, 49 times 2. This becomes a 7. This becomes an i. And she's got a 3. Put it all together to get 21i times the square root of this 2. And, of course, the square root of 25, Genesis, 5. Well, what can be combined together, Kendall? Um, the 9i and the negative 6i. To get? Um, 3i. We can also combine? Negative 3i squared of 21i. Square root of 2 to get? And then there's that lonely little positive five. positive 5. So we've got imaginary, imaginary with an irrational portion, though technically imaginary is out of the realm of rational and irrational anyway, and then we've got this one lonely little real rational number as well. Part real, part imaginary. Anyone remember from last lesson what I called a number that has part real, part imaginary? Complex. We're going to be talking about those numbers here shortly, but a complex number uh, here. Um, let's go to the next. I already, I already had that answer, first of all. You had that for the first one? All right, questions on that. Questions on that. I understand it now. Yes, ma'am? Is that the order you put it in? Preferably not. No, preferably you put the real first. We're going to get to this in a little bit, but preferably put the real first. Technically, you'd actually end up factoring out the i to get a 3 plus 24 squared of 2. I, but that's getting into what we're about to talk about. We're not going to be quite that involved anyway, so that's why I was content to leave it. But yeah, great question. It shows your thinking. Um, but yeah, this is technically what we call standard form, but we're going to get to that momentarily. Great question. Teacher's pet now. All right, questions. <laughs> All right, uh, looking at the next I know, Michael's like, I had it once. All right, looking at the next one here. Um, speaking of Michael, here we go. Chance for redemption. Uh, Michael, what do we do on this next one? You pull out your eye. Good. I told my teacher to pull out his eye and he said good. <laughs> Alright, anyway. I mean, if you do it, you can't see the negative. But, um, it's then... true. <laughs> now it doesn't bother me anymore. If the eye offend me, pluck it out. Alright, anyway, keep going. Let's apply 15 and 6 to get 90. Well, square root of 90. Yeah. So we have i times the square root of 90. And then you got to pull out a 9 and a 10. And you get 3i times the square root of 10. There we go. How many have this answer for the second one? Questions on the second one. All right. And then on the last one, uh, what do we need to do here, Brandon? Pull out your eyes. Pull out your eyes, both of them this time, to get 10i uh, squared of 14, 2i squared of 2. And get the 10 into the body and into the eyes. And the body to get square root of 7. There we go. 5 times the square root of 7 is our answer. Now, again, you might be saying, well, wouldn't you just say negative divided by negative gives a positive, so why bother pulling out the eyes? Careful. I want you to be in the habit of pulling out the eyes. You don't make mistakes somewhere else. But technically, you get away with the mistake here. But that is the correct process. Well done, Brandon. How many get the same answer on the last one? All right, questions on the last one. Did we make it that far? Or was that what? You did make it that far. Does it make sense now? All right, questions? All right, any questions at all on imaginary numbers before we progress to the next thing? So, next section of your notes, complex numbers. Complex numbers. I'm just going to leave this Abby number up here. I don't know, Michael, you're related to her. Would you say she's complex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyway, uh, so uh, complex numbers. They're part real, part imaginary. Part real, part imaginary. I mean, part you can understand and parts you can't. Anyway, <laughs> complex numbers. Part real, part imaginary. All right. And uh, the standard form of a complex number is written this way, A plus BI, meaning you put the real then you put the imaginary in that order. 
the real and the imaginary in that order. This is what we call the standard form. This is all you're going to use this year. When you get to senior year, we'll change and use an alternate form of complex numbers, but you're not ready for it yet. So we'll just stay in the standard form here in Algebra 2 and let life be somewhat easy. There are advantages to the other form, but you know, not if you can't get there. So A plus BI, that's called the standard form, so, which is why when Abby asked about the number, we put the real first, then we put all of the coefficient together before the imaginary, and that would be how we'd write a complex number. Though usually you'll have one something like this. Write this down, 5 plus 3i. 5 is real, the 3i is imaginary. And maybe we could add, for instance, something like 2 plus i. Notice, part real, part imaginary. In your notes, adding complex numbers, and that's what we're going to talk about now. Adding complex numbers. Head offhand there, Michael. Frankly, if you were given this question on a quiz or test, and you hadn't been taught, you'd probably figure it out. You'd probably be like, well, the 5 and the 2 look the same, so let's add them together to get 7. And the 3i and this other i look kind of the same, so let's add them to get 4i. And you'd be right. Step 1, add the real. Step 2, add the imaginary. You like a lesson like this on a Monday morning? Let's keep it easy, huh? Add the real, add the imaginary. That's how you add complex numbers. Add the real, add the imaginary. Any questions on that? Just to make sure we've got this, let's do one more. 8 negative 5i plus negative 7 negative 3i. Notice, class, these are complex numbers. How do I know they are complex numbers? Class, because they are part real. and part yeah. imaginary. And they are in the standard form because I have the real written before the imaginary. By the way, you recall I said before we shouldn't have a leading negative. That is not true of complex numbers. Because you have to lead with the real, and if the real happens to be negative, so what? So this is the one time we'll, we'll allow an exception to the leading negative. You have to lead with the negative because you have to lead with the real. Well, when I add 8 plus negative 7 class, 1. Negative 5i plus negative 3i. Questions on adding complex numbers. Shall we progress to something more challenging, befitting people of your station as 10th and 11th graders? Maddie's like, no, we're good right here. <laughs> we move on anyway. Next section, subtracting. Write this down. Add the inverse. Subtracting. Add the inverse. You'll notice that my addition problems have magically become subtraction problems. We're going to magically make them become adding the inverse problems. Speaking of magical problems, Maddie, what, what do we do on the first one? Um, we add the five and negative two. Right, we add and make this a negative two, and also this becomes a. So when I add the five and the negative two, I get. And when I add the three i and the negative i, I get. And there's my answer. On the next one, Genesis, what do we do? Um, one. Well, it wants us to subtract these complex numbers, right? Oh, so it? Change the sign. Right, change it to adding the. Inverse. So these both become positive. All right, now what do I get? 15 plus, wait, no, minus. A negative 5i and a positive 3i. Negative 2i. Negative 2i. There we go. And there we are. It's a good thing this is Monday's lesson, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Questions on this? You get an extra hour of sleep, it messes everybody up. It's true. Our bodies are like, this should be sixth hour right now. We should be about done. And it's not sixth hour, it's fifth hour. All right, questions on this? 
<laughs> I just blew her mind. <laughs> a time change? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, questions on this? Questions on this? Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next thing in your notes. Multiplying. Multiplying. You probably saw that coming. Multiplying complex numbers. Now, understanding that a complex number is by its nature a binomial, part real, part imaginary, and realizing that all complex numbers are binomials, and they are all part real, part imaginary. Therefore, they are always similar to some degree. And remembering that we multiply similar binomials class through FOIL, good Maddie, new favorite student, how should I multiply complex numbers? What do you think we should write in our notes? FOIL, write that down. Foil. Foil. You might write yourself a note, though. Remember, I squared becomes negative 1, because we're going to, when we multiply the last, we're going to run into an I squared every time. So just a reminder to yourself, I squared becomes negative 1. So let's foil. When we multiply the first class, we get 10. We multiply the outer, um, inner, six, combines to get, um, and then we multiply the last, 3i squared. squared. But remembering that i squared is negative 1, what is 3 times negative 1? Three. This really just becomes a negative 3. And now the first and the last can now combine to give me a plus 11. I, and notice complex times complex still leaves me here with a complex value. Okay, so a little bit more challenging, I guess, than just adding the reals and adding the imaginaries, or even perhaps adding the inverse, but I don't think it's too hard, right? Not a new concept for us. Questions on this one? Well, let's go to the next one. Let's multiply these two complex numbers, and let's multiply the first, Michael. Let's multiply the outer Kendall. Negative 24i. And the inner. Positive 35i. We have a negative 24 and a positive 35. Mm -hmm. You can use your calculator. Negative 24, positive 35. 11. Positive 11, i. And then we multiply the last together, Genesis. Positive. But I squared becomes, so really this is 15 times negative 1, or, and then I can combine the negative 56 with the negative 15, Maddie. And of course, we'll keep the positive 11 on. And there's our answer. Questions on multiplying complex numbers. Again, basic FOIL. Don't forget the I squared becomes negative 1 at the end to go back to a complex number. Questions on that? And we want to guess what the next thing in the notes will be? Dividing. So smart. Dividing complex numbers. Dividing complex numbers. Now remember, how do we show division in algebra class? Fraction. With a fraction bar. So I'm going to represent this as 5 plus 3i over 2 positive i, with or without the parentheses. Oftentimes the parentheses would not be used in a division problem, since the terms are already separated by the fraction bar and grouped thereby. Now here's a problem. Remember that i means the square root of negative 1. So in a sense, you could think of i as an irrational concept. Does that make sense? And if that's true, and we can never allow square roots in the denominator, then we can't allow i's in the denominator either. Does that make sense? So, we also, though, because it says a complex number, we have two terms in the denominator, which means we have a two-term radical denominator. How do we take care of a two-term radical denominator? Multiply. multiply by the conjugate. That's your key on dividing these numbers. Multiply by the conjugate. 
doing this with me, remember the conjugate of 2 positive i would be 2 negative i. And of course, we'll multiply the top by 2 negative i as well, because what you do to the bottom, got to do to the top. So if you've got to multiply the bottom by 2 negative i, you've got to multiply the top by 2 negative i. And in the denominator, since it's the conjugate, since we've got the sum and difference, we always do three things. Very good, Brandon. New favorite student. That was short-lived, Matt. <laughs> and Abby. Square the first square, let's put a minus sign between it. So we square the first, what do we get? We square the last, what do we get? We put a minus sign between them. But remember that i squared means negative 1. So this is really 4 minus negative 1, which means my denominator is really 5. Questions on what we've done so far? Don't want to get too far ahead of anybody. And we need to run through that one more time, what we did. You all still good? Okay. In the numerator, well, we just looked at this. We're multiplying two complex numbers. So we just foil. foil. Audrey first. Okay. Ten. Ten. Outer, inner, Abby. Um, um, negative 5i and positive 6i, so positive 1 or positive i. All right, positive i. And then our last end of giving us what, Brandon? Negative but remember, i squared means? So it's negative 3 times negative 1, which gives us positive 3, which 10 and 3 combined to give us? 13 plus i all over 5. The way your book would write this, they put the real as 13 fifths, the imaginary as a 1 fifth i. I can see the case for this because it's standard form, but remember, I'm lazy. I just circle 13 plus i over 5. But this means the same thing, and it's perhaps more written in the standard form than the other. Eh, whatever. Too lazy. This looks more concise. Concise is nice. We like that. Questions on that? So look at the next one. If we were to divide, <clears throat> if we were to, uh, we're to divide by negative 7, negative 3i. Can't do that because the i is, think of it as kind of irrational, if you will. Anytime it tells us to divide by a complex number, we really got to do what, class? Multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So what are we multiplying by right here? Genesis? 7 plus 3i. Careful, the only thing that changes is the middle sign. So... There we go. The first term will keep whatever sign it had. It's just the middle's going to change. Negative 7 plus 3i. And of course, what we do to the bottom class? Yeah, so negative 7 plus 3i here also. And of course, in the denominator, we've got to do three things, class. So we square the first. We square the last. We put a? But of course, we know that i squared means? Negative 1. So this is really negative 9 times negative 1. Positive 9. And that gives us a denominator of? 58. Questions so far? Again, don't want to lose anybody. Everyone still with me? Take your rattle. Not your pencil, your head. Moron. All right, <laughs> in the numerator. <laughs> Brackett's like, how do you see me? I was actually talking to Michael. <laughs> All right, uh, here's the numerator. What do we have to do, Michael? You got a foil. We got a foil. When we multiply the first, what do we get? Negative 56. When we multiply the outer, inner, what do we get, Audrey? Last time it was 11. Oh, wait, it changed the sign on me. Man, that was a good memory, though. <laughs> I like how lazy you are. That's good. It shows, I, it shows I've taught you something. Positive 59. Not how to get correct answers, but how to be lazy. All right, and then the last, Kendall. But of course, class, we know I squared means? So negative 15 I squared really becomes... And we combine the positive 15 with the negative 56 to get anybody? 41. Negative 41. Of course, we still have the plus 59i all over 58. I'm not going to separate it out because I am too lazy. Questions on this? 
All right, let's practice. I want you to do numbers 13 to 19, the odd, on pages 104 to 105. Okay, well, let me have you do those as well as 27 and 29. So six problems, 13, 15, 17, 19, 27, and 29. This is in the practice section, right? Correct, 104 to 105, so it would have to be in the practice. This is why I teach you guys, so you won't be stupid like so many other people in America. Anyway. <laughs> ah, stupidity irritates the snot out of me. And I still have a cold every now and then. <laughs> All right. But I have higher ambitions for you guys. You're not going to be stupid one day, right, Brandon? <laughs> no, you're not. All right. Are we finished with 13 through 19, the odd of 27 and 29? Not all of us. Okay, someone's still finishing. Take another you know, 30 seconds, minute, maybe. Anyway, there's a section, Note for Driver, with specific instructions for where to find a key. Oh. I put instructions. What's the one thing they left off the work order for the poor driver? They never gave him the details of where to find the key. Mm. So he drove on to his next job because he couldn't get a hold of me. 
It's not his fault. It's the guy who was supposed to give him the instruction. Like, how did you not give him the instructions? Like, the most important instruction of the whole thing is where is he going to find the key? And you didn't give him that? Oh, I can't believe some people. Anyway. <laughs> Number 13. What would you get for your answer, Brandon? Fourteen plus three. See, you're smarter than the guy in the corporate office. Fourteen plus three. I Well done, Brandon. Uh, number 15. What would you get, Maddie? <laughs> Well done, Maddie. 19 plus 24i. I don't want to get a job at a tow company, but. <laughs> <laughs> Number 17, what did you get for your answer, Genesis? Uh oh. We're finished with that one yet? Questions? On the first two? You got on the first two? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, what do we need to do on Number 17, Genesis? Anytime it says subtract, what do we always do? We never subtract. We always add it. Anytime in algebra ever, we always add the inverse. So we got our 17 plus 6i, but it says subtract. I'm like, no, 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 I don't do that. I don't subtract. I don't put a minus sign. I put a plus sign. So, But I, I don't just change that. I also change here. So I don't write 9 plus 2i. I put ooh. There we go. And now I go right back to what I did before. I just had the real. Negative positive eight. Positive eight. And I add the imaginary. Uh, four. Five. There we go. Uh, number 19. Same thing we had to do there, Kendall. Uh, 21 plus 41i. Very good. 21 plus 41i. Questions on 13, 15, 17, 19. Any questions on those? This is what happens too when you don't pick up your phone when everybody is busy. Oh my God, I'm in the middle of the room. Anyway, all right. Um, should have just taken a call and be like, hold on, Breck, and hold on, Gavin. I'll be right back. I didn't do that. Should have. Uh, number 27. We had to multiply. We had to foil. What'd you end up with for your final answer, Michael? Uh, 17 plus 51i. Well done, Michael. 17 plus 51i. Number 29. What did you get for your answer, Audrey? Number 17. Negative 72 minus 21i. How many got both of those correct? Anyone need to see, Genesis, you didn't get that far. Do you want to see one of those worked out, 27 or 29? On page 105. At the top of the page, 27 and 29? Uh, no, I don't. You're good on the foil? Yeah. All right, just, just checking. All right, um, take a look at number 31. Number 31. We got a 14 plus 12i all over 2. Now, here you are not dividing complex numbers. You're dividing a complex number by a real number. And it really is that easy. You divide the 14 by 2 class, and you divide the 12i by 2. That is not in your notes, because I didn't think we needed to put it in your notes. But does that make sense? Are there any questions on that? What if oh, this had been a 6? Then you could either take a two out of everything, or you could divide here and reduce the fraction to 7 thirds, and divide here to get 2i. Does that make sense? But if it's just a plain old number, you do what you would do with anything else if it was a plain old number. Questions? Uh, number 33. Number 33. This technically is not dividing by a complex number, it's dividing by an imaginary number. Here's the deal. You still got an i in the bottom, right? But you can't multiply by a conjugate because there ain't no conjugate, right? So you might want to jot this in your notes. If you're dividing by just an imaginary value, to make it not imaginary, you would need one more i in there, right? Because if you get one more i, what would your denominator be? 7i squared, which becomes negative 7. So if it's imaginary, just multiply top and bottom by i. So the, the denominator becomes, as we said, 7i squared, which becomes negative 7. And the top, you'll distribute the i to initially get what, Abby? Um, 3i plus negative But of course, we know that i squared class just means so 5, i squared becomes. And we will put that at the beginning before the positive 3i. 
Does that make sense? Put the real before the imaginary. One last thing, let's slide this negative. We might as well slide that out front. We could leave the rest of it. Or, again, maybe you prefer to write it as two separate things. Positive 5 sevenths, negative 3 sevenths, I. These are the same answer. All right, questions on that. If there's just an imaginary in the bottom, multiply top and bottom by I. That knocks out the I from the bottom. If it's a real, you really don't have a problem, just reduce it down. And then, of course, if we saw something like 35, there we have to multiply by the conjugate. Although, thoughts on something we might be able to do on 35 to speed up our work, maybe? If we take a 2 out of everything, what would it look like now, Michael? It would look like negative 4 minus i over 2 plus 3i. And I would reduce before you multiply by the conjugate. At your seats, multiply by the conjugate. What is the conjugate class? Two. Do 37 if you're already finished. If you did not get this answer, questions? Any questions at all on 35? All right, you're doing 37. Anyone see the three? Take it out of everything? How many at least got this far? All right. Yeah, so I was like, hmm. One, one, four adds up to six. Two, four is six. One, one, seven is nine. Yep, there's a three in everything. And there's our answer. Questions on these processes? Any questions on complex numbers? How to add, subtract, multiply, divide? All right, homework for this evening is to do pages 104 to 105. Pages 104 to 105. Do numbers 14 to 20 and 28 to 38, the evens for both sections. So we did a bunch of odd problems in class. You're doing all those even numbered problems, 14 to 20 and then 28 to 38 
all those evens. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll go over this more tomorrow and then show how we will use complex numbers as we proceed. Have a great day.